Welcome back to Vandalia Brunner High School, where WSN is bringing you game two of this regional semifinal action in Division IV girls basketball. Tonight, a pair of teams from the Shelby County Athletic League, Fort Laramie League champions this year, and second place, Rushi Raiders. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to do play-by-play -play alongside Jerry Snodgrass. Jerry, these two teams split during the regular season. Fort Laramie won in January. Rushi won in February. But Rushi uh, was finished second in the conference. But we have a very good matchup between two very good basketball teams. You know, we sure do. You know, it doesn't get any better than, you know, the rubber match between the two. You know, split during the season, as you mentioned. And, you know, Rushi just continues to find a way to win. They hit with the injury bug, you know, throughout the year. But just keep finding ways to win. And, you know, you look at Fort Laramie, and they've always found a way to win when you look through the years. So, yeah. a great matchup and great coaches. Absolutely. That is a dead solid In fact, let's talk about what Paul Bremigan has done this year with Rushi. They have had three different girls uh, who are going to play significant roles in the season, have season-ending injuries, all lower leg-type injury situations, and yet they're still 22-4. and four. They are 10-2. and two. They average 51 a game. They give up 31 a game. Paul's got them playing very well. Yeah, and you know, when you look at that sometimes and you say, you know, uh, sometimes those are the years that are just the best years in coaching. You got 22 wins and went through that whole injury thing with kids. And, boy, you know, every day you're almost playing on house money, you know, but you just keep on going. Let's talk about the starting lineup then for the Rushi Raiders. They will start number three, CC Borgers, 5'9", senior, 12.5 points per game, 4.7 rebounds. Number four is Ronnie Poling, 6'0", junior, averaging 8 a game and 5.6 rebounds. 13, Kate Sherman, 6'1", senior, 9.7, 8 boards for her. Number 14 is Reese Goubeau, 5'6", senior, 8.3. The final starter is number 20, that is Jayla Shappy. She's a 5'5", junior, averaging 2.1 points per game. Again, they scored at 51 points a game, and they give up 31. Carter Siegel's team at Fort Laramie, they were ranked number two in the poll this year. They were 24-2, and 11-1 in Shelby County Athletic League play this year. And uh, Jerry, this is a team that just hangs its hat on defense, giving up just 29 points a game. I saw them play earlier in the year, and you look at, yeah, you're right. They're not a very flashy, high-scoring team, but boy, oh boy, point differential is such a big thing for them. And uh, again, Carlos Siegel is such a great coach. Again, I don't think they're flashy. They just get the job done and, and hound you on defense. Let's talk about their starting lineup then. Player of the year in the Shelby County League. Number 11 will be Ava Turner, 5'8", senior. She averages just under 10 points a game, four boards, two assists. Number 21, Victoria Mesher, six-foot sophomore, eight point three points per game for her. 22 is Skylar Albers, 5'10", junior, 8.2 points per game for her. 30 is Jade Rose, 5'5", junior, 2.4. And Avery Brandaway wears number 40. She is a 5'10", sophomore with 11.8 and just under eight rebounds per game. Keys to the game, Jerry, how are we going to look at this one? Well, you know, let's first of all look at Rushi. You know, we talk about this one, and you hear it every game, but, you know, for us, I think you and I both, we believe in this so much, Rushi must control the boards. I think that's so critical for them. They have a chance to do it. They're not going against a huge team. Two, they need to stop their tradition. And three, they need to execute on the offensive end. Fort yep. Laramie, how, how about them? They're this team that's been to the state tournament 11 times. They've won three in the last few years. How about keys to them? Well, number one, they feel strongly they need to control Sherman and Poling in the paint. Two, here we go again. Every coach says it. They need to rebound the basketball and control the boards. Three, they have to handle the Rushi pressure on the front court. And they have a fourth key I think that's so critical for them is they're a very patient uh, we talk about offensive efficiency ratings or mm. being efficient in the offensive end. They have, they've done it so well, they need to keep doing that. That's a big key every game for them. The winner comes back on Saturday at 1 p.m. here at Vandalia Butler. They will play Tri-Village, a 50-38 winner over Marion Local. But we've got this one to take care of first. It's Rushi and it's Fort Laramie. It's regional semifinal basketball. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Vandalia Butler High School. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Schein and Jerry Snodgrass, we're going through our final starting lineups here this evening. Our officials tonight, Angelo Zalotas, Jason Notifer, and Andy Douglas will be our officials for this basketball game this evening. How did Rusi get here? Well, they have defeated Triad 61-8, then Bradford 59-11. Botkins, 47-27, and a district championship game over Legacy Christian, who was the number one seed, by the way. 
And that was a 57-32 victory. Fort Army, they have defeated Fairlawn 70-18. Troy Christian 69-23. Jackson Center 47-33. And their district final game was a 52-19 win over Covington. And we are ready for district or regional semifinal basketball. You know, great facility here. Jordan Shoemaker, the athletic director here. Uh, just love coming to this facility. Ava Brandaway will jump center with Ronnie Poling. And the ball is tipped into the backcourt, and it is wrestled away by Reese Goubeau. Here's a pass ahead, straight line drive. That shot's blocked. We're going the other way. Numbers for Alarmy to the rim, and the first basket of the game will go to Skyler Albers. Big defensive stop and a run out. Well, that's a quick pace, you know, Boy. to get that first basket. But it all started from the defensive pressure. Here's Gubo. Wing pass. CC Borchers lob inside and muscle up shot missed inside, however, by Sherman. And here comes Fort Lauderdale the other way. Well, you saw Numbers two, the, again. the help side defense that created that tough shot. Brandaway worked inside, couldn't get a shot. We'll get a three look instead, and the rebound goes to Sherman. Goubeau throws it ahead. Bounce pass inside, and Poling goes up. She can't finish. And who hit the ball out of bounds off of Fort Army? Jerry, we played 55 seconds of <laughs> exhausting <laughs> basketball. We were a little <laughs> surprised here at that pace. Jayla Shappy is the inbounder, and she will toss it out front to Borchers. This is Poling, and stolen. This is Skyler Alberts. Excuse me, it's Brandewey headed to the rim. Brandewey finishes. Two runouts, two baskets. Here's full court pressure. Man, you just love that defensive pressure. You know, so solid on the on the pressure up top. Borchers tried to get into the lane, and then Shappy lost it out of, out of bounds. You can really tell the the aggressor right now, and, and yeah. I, I, that's not faulting Rushi. It's just that. That boy, you can just tell that Fort Lauderdale has made it a point of we're going out aggressive. Headed to the rim and cross court pass, catch, score, basket, Skyler Albers. She's got four in the game. Quick six point lead. Redskins. Porcher's pull up, jumping up, shots blocked. Poling tries to throw it back in bounds. And kind of a wild play. The basketball is going to go out of bounds to Fort Army. You know, that's something that Carlos Seagull's teams do so well. They play such good help side defense. So no matter where the ball goes in, there's somebody there right away. If somebody gets beat on the perimeter, there's help right there. Steele headed to the rim. Borchers finished her first basket. Great quick hands by Borchers. That good low hand where you don't slap into somebody's wrist right. gets a steal. Ball's lost, and we're going to get a double dribble, I think. Yes, we are. Chris Remington helping the official yep. out. Official I, turned around and said, yes, yeah, you're right. Or, or I don't need <laughs> your help. <laughs> yeah. Here comes first sub into the back. No, it's not a sub. Chappie was over talking to her coach. She's going to inbound it. Reese Goubeau. Finally gets it over midcourt without being in a hurry. Tipped out of bounds. Good defensive effort by Ava Turner. Subs for each team. First of all, 41, Summer Hoying enters for Fort Army. And uh, 22, Simone Putoff will enter for the Rushi Raiders. And you know, both, both teams play a lot of girls here. Yeah, you know, and Simone Putoff was hurt earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. She's been able, she was the fourth, I think, that was hurt. And been able to battle back. Here's another steal, is it? Nope. Rush is able to secure the basketball. Now they've got numbers the other way. Here's a lob inside. And put up inside Sherman again. That won't go. And finally, the ball is ripped away by Skyler Albers. Here's Brandewey rim running. Missed a shot. Butcher's on the floor. Going to stay in this end of the court. Also on the floor was Ava Turner, player of the year in the Shelby County Athletic League. Here comes number 12, Carissa Meyer, into the basketball game. Also, I guess it's a Victoria Mesher back into the game. You know, you mentioned they play, both teams play a lot of players, and they do yep. such a good job of putting them in in 
good situations, so they're just part of that starting lineup rotation. At, at this pace, you're going to play a bunch of girls tonight. Penetration dribble, Mesher. And we got a pushing foul, opening foul of the basketball game. Assessed to Orchers. I'm really impressed starting the game out, you know, just how aggressive uh, Fort Lormy is on both ends of the court. Carissa Meyer, pass inside on the out-of-bounds play, overshot by Turner, but the rebound comes to Meyer. Another drive to the goal. Mesher missed that one, and Sherman gets the rebound. Those shots are tougher than they look, you know? They, they get into traffic like that, it's so much tougher than they look. Borchers on the floor with Avery Brandaway. Brandaway hit it out of bounds. And once again, we just have quick hands out there all the time. It just makes handling the ball and running an offense very, very challenging. Skyler Albers will re return to the basketball game, replacing Ava Turner. Also, looks like we're going to get, uh, I think, Kelby Dosick, 5'10 senior, will enter for the Rushi Raiders, wearing the blue and gold this evening, Fort Lomini in white with black trim. Here's Dubow. Reese gets a three look. A little bit long. Sherman hustled after the rebound. <laughs> One of the Fort Lomini assistant coaches is going to grab it first. <laughs> but instead, it goes out of bounds. We had one last night, Jerry. Official standing on the court. The ball was passed to him, and it went out of bounds. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the official's just part of the play. It's That's just right. the way it is. So, Victoria Mesher looking to get inside, and cannot against good defense from Borchers. Randall Wee. Boing, trying to work. Boy, good man-to-man -man pressure defense by Rushi. Rushi gives up 31 points a game. Fort Army 29, so they're both very defensive-oriented teams. Summer Hoying has to give it up. Brandewee goes to the rim. She gets cut off by Sherman, and Sherman gets a block and a rebound. Dubo with the basketball, throws it ahead. Porchers goes to the rim. Pull-up jumper for her is short. Here's a long pass ahead. Summer Hoying outruns everybody and she scores. 8-2. And that was really good patience by Fort Ormy to see that. Timeout will go to Paul Bremingen and his Rushi Raiders. 3.48 to go in the opening quarter. You're watching high school tournament basketball on WOSN. Our free throw sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and in Sydney. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Good time out by Coach Remigan. Yes, it was. I think it was just to slow that pace down just a little bit. You know, uh, Fort Warren will take that time out. Just, you know, catch the breath a little bit. Keep the pressure. You know, an interesting stat by... Uh, Fort for Fort Laramie is they hold their opponents to a 31% shooting percentage. What does that tell you? That's just great defense. Means nobody's getting open looks. You're right. And they get back on defense. You're not running out in transition. That just a whole lot of numbers to go with that as put off throws the basketball in bounds. And Borchers will bring it up. Trap on the perimeter. Yeah. You see it coming out of that timeout. Yep. You know, coming out of that timeout, a little different look on defense. I don't know who invented that. I know Dean Smith made it as popular as anybody. Take the point guard and trap the first wing pass yep. and flap a backside helper to try to get a steal. And Fort Larmer does it really, really well. well Bo is out front. She's going to be fouled. Well, you know, not only that, Mark, but I think you would agree with me when I say this from a coaching angle that the game is not as complicated as a lot of people might think. And whatever teams do, I will tell you, it'll recycle in another 10, 15 years. So you're right, Dean Smith probably did it, but it's right back, you know, in vogue. This is Dosick with the basketball. She finally gives the ball to Gubo. She goes up over traffic, rebound. Gubo, our Borchers gets her own rebound. That one won't go in. A lot of pressure around the rim. Mesher throws with the basketball. Jump shot. Off glass. Victoria Mesher. Boy, was that impressive for her to catch that ball in traffic and still just like square up and shoot a good jump shot 
taking her time. That's something you don't see right now too often. 10-2 early lead, Redskins. And we're going to get a foul. Somebody tried to shove through a screen. You can see. Well, that Victoria Mesher has both fouls for Fort Army. And she heads to the bench. Sherman's back in the game. Kate Sherman, 6'1", senior, who is a uh, all-conference player in the SCAL. Shot going up inside was taken by Reese Goubeau, and she will get our first free throws tonight, our Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. That coming off the out-of-bounds play. And, you know, Mark, you and I both, in the days of our coaching, you know, we talked, you know, we used to focus a lot on out-of-bounds plays, but I'm not sure we statistically kept track of the scoring off of those out-of-bounds. Everybody does now. Yep. And, you know, you talk about analytics all you want, but, you know, I think that's become a really good thing for schools and teams to learn. And here's what will work. Ariel Heitkamp is waiting at the scores table, and she will enter the basketball game. Ariel's a 5-5 sophomore. Here's Goubeau's second free throw. This one she makes. Makes the lead 10-3, full court pressure. Avery Brandewey throws it up the court to Summer Hoying. That pass was stolen by Goubeau. Tried to throw it down inside the pole and couldn't get it there. Here's a ball fake. Here's Goubeau again. That help defense is really good, isn't it? They, it they got sure help is. defenses back in the paint when the ball's on the opposite side of the court. That ball's tipped loose. Ends up in Summer Hoying's hands. Hyde Camp made it happen. And did we travel? We did. Yep. yep. Good long call by the official yeah, on that. Long pass ahead to Skylar Albertson trying to get her feet set. She traveled. Not many turnovers in the opening quarter. Six minutes into this one. Borcher's back in the game. Well, you know, that's interesting, too, because, you know, Fort Laramie only averages 14 turnovers a game, but they force, ready for this, they force 24 turnovers a game. That's 10 extra possessions yep. they're going to get. Ball goes off a leg on Borcher's pass. Goubeau for three. Big scramble for the rebound. It ends up in Heitkamp's hands. And that defense just forced a little quicker shot, I think, than Rushi wanted to take. Albers. Now they look inside and will reset the offense with 90 seconds to go. Trap out front. Yep. Heitkamp pressured on the wing. Brandewe gets cut off. She gives the ball to a jump shooting Summer Hoying. He's got four points now. And I always thought that little six-footer on the baseline, seven-footer, one of the toughest shots in basketball. But boy, it was just a Summer Hoying just put that up so soft. Polling lobs it down inside Sherman, who has to ball fake and go up through pressure and gets her own rebound, and this time we'll go to the free throw line. Kate Sherman was fouled to get a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Well, the Redskins, Car Carla Siegel, really, really wanted to stop that inside game. That's a big strength for Rushi. Summer Hoying gets her first foul. Well, four on our Reese Myron and Company CPA scoreboard. Kate Sherman shoots 68% from the free throw line. First team all conference, 9.7 points per game, 8.1 rebounds. Second free throw. And her team's going to hustle into the rebound as it comes out into the hands of Addison Shappy. This is Borchers. And now Addison Shappy. Bowling's posted up inside. Both balls poked out of bounds, however. And that's part of that aggressive defense for Fort Warmy, you know, fronting in the post, trying to get around and fronting. And boy, you've just got help side. You've got somebody right on you if you happen to turn and face the basket. Addison Shappy in the lane, bounce pass. That ball's knocked out of bounds by Ava Turner. 
Well, that's frustrating as a, as a player, you know, when you've got, you're just protecting the ball. And you can't do what you want to do on offense sometimes because you're more worried about just protecting the basketball. Jaden Rose into the game, as is Reese Gubo. Try to run her inside screen action. That one will be tipped out of bounds by Avery Brandway. There's your deflections you talked about yeah, uh, yes. today. Just do anything you can to disrupt what the other guys want to do. Inbound again, Addison Shappy. Same offense, same out of bounds play. Porcher's runner in the lane is a little bit hard. Hoying rebounds. Here's the outlet pass. Penetration dribble. That was Turner headed to the rim. Ball slapped out of her hands. The 28.1 to go in her opening quarter. I think we had a good view of that. I think they thought a lot of the Rushi fans thought that went off her knee, but it did. You can see it from here. I don't think it did at all. Good call. Lob pass out in front. Brandewee to the rim. Muscle up. Wow. And, and one opportunity on a really strong move to the goal. Avery Brandewee. Shows you why she's a first team all conference player. No denying her on that. Like, I'm going to get this. I don't care how uh, strong you are on me. The foul went to Kate Sherman, her first. Here comes Alex Rose into the game, 5'9", a junior. They sometimes, play nine. Yeah, you know, sometimes on a free throw like that, too, you look at, okay, they're bringing in some fresh people, and are they going to press after this? They're picking up full court. 15-11. 15-4. It's an 11-point lead. See if Rucci gets the last shot here of the quarter. Kubel playing catch out front with Borchers. Borchers heads to the rim, and as she tries to turn the corner, steps on a foot and gets a foul called against Fort Laramie. Skyler Albers first, team's fourth. This will allow Summer Hoing to re-enter. 5'11 junior. It's going to replace. That was 23. Alex Rose, yes, yep. it was Alex Rose. Extra look, seven seconds look, yeah. of a break here. Skip pass. Dubo for three. Rebound basket. Poling got it at the buzzer. Ronnie Poling scores her first basket. That cuts the lead to Fort Laramie's 15. Rushi's six after one. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Scoreboard Times presented by Reese Meyerig and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate to their financial future. And that scoreboard shows Fort Laramie 15, Rushi 6, 5 points, Avery Brandery, 4, Summer Hoying, 4, Scott Steiner Albers, CC Borchers, and Ronnie Poling have a basket apiece for Rushi. This is interesting. Rushi basketball right at midcourt. They ran it out of bounds. That's kind of a different yes, set there. I wasn't quite sure what they were going to do with that. I was looking for something like a lob to the yeah. goal or something. But instead, they got it inbound to Reese Gubo. Here's Sherman inside. They'd like to get her going. Instead, lob pass Poling, and they nice do score. Pass. Yes, what it was. A nice pass. I think Coach Brebinger said, guess what we're doing yep. coming out of the, of the break? And right to the rim. That shot's blocked. Steiner Albert's shot's knocked away. Here's Borchers going the other way. Poling make a diving, making a diving save on that. Gubo long three. Sherman battling inside for the rebound, but instead it comes down to Albers. Pull up jumper, Turner bounces around. Ava Turner has a basket now. Skyler, Albers. Oh, Skyler Albers, my mistake. She's got six in the game. Sherman on top. Trying to post up polling inside. Got it down there. And we're going to get a foul as she muscled up through Avery Brandewey. Brandewey's first foul. And you know, you can really tell. I tell you, I give Coach Bre Brebergen a lot of credit during that timeout or, or during that quarter break. 
he that was a little different look to get that ball inside to, re, to Ronnie Poling and really did a nice job. Here's a couple of Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. You can find them in Piqua and in Sydney. Poling has four points in the game. She missed her opening free throw opportunity. I'm going to do a I'm going to launch a survey when this. Uh, years over and see if the worst free throw shooting might be in this gym yeah, and boy. I don't know why. I, After I, a game and a quarter, yeah, yeah. Huh? everything is really hard on that rim. And there she makes that one for a fifth point. Good, I jinxed her the other yeah. way. Brandwee. This will be a corner shot by Albers. That missed and Borchers rebounds and Brandwee's going to get a foul, I think. There are two white shirts there. And two officials making a call. And that's foul number seven, I think, already. And well, that would be a good thing for Rushi yes, if they could would. make a few. They've had struggles offensively. You know, the other thing I think that does, I mean, I know that I just think that slows the pace down it a little does. bit, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's just a, one of those little things that lulls you into sleep a little bit sometimes when you're going to the free throw line all the time. We're barely into the second free throw. quarter there into the, in the, the one and one. Got to make him though. Yep. Borchers ripped the ball away. And who hit it? Well, they they stay with Rushi, off, yeah. yeah. Off of Rushi off a of Fort Army leg, I think, in that I'm, scrum. Yeah, I'm not sure it did. It didn't yeah. look like it, but I know Carlos Siegel's put off with inbound. She lobs it into the backcourt. Good defensive pressure. Dubois scrambles for it. Now Borcher scrambles for it. We're going to get a Fort Army foul. Shove it to go get the ball. And That's, once again, you're going to the free throw line yep. on that. That goes to Skyler Alberts as she has two. And I, I know that the, uh, the fans didn't like it, but that is exactly what the officials have been told to call. Yep. So you don't get any scrums on the floor. People diving for the ball and fouling exactly people. Right. That, that, that's just a, a directive that's come to the officials this year. Carissa Meyer re-enters. I think if you look at the game through the years, you know, that's one of the things on how aggressive the game has become of people diving on the floor. I mean, yeah, you need to teach kids to do it, but you got to call it. The, the, there was sort of no intent to foul there, but when it happens, you got to call it. Right. And another missed free throw. That one's banged into the corner where it's tracked down by Ava Turner. And Fort Army will keep possession of the basketball. Army against defense, decent defensive pressure. Mesher's pass goes ahead. And Summer Hoyne gets it. Now they go back on top to set their offense. And you know, I've talked a lot about Fort Army's pressure defense, but I, I'll tell you what, it's Rushi too. Backing them down inside. We're going to get a blocking foul that will go against CC Borchers, and she becomes a person with two fouls. Just a third team foul, so we'll take this one out of bounds. Porter's is going to get a little bit of a break right here. She'll be replaced by Simone Putoff. Out of bounds play, cut to the goal. We're going to get blocking foul. Well, that was a nice cut that time to get open. Jab one way, go the other, and she's so quick. Jayla Shappy gets the foul, and back to the free throw line we will go, this time at this end of the floor for Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Ava Turner, 64% free throw shooter. The first point of the game, player of the year in the Shelby County Athletic League. And I can see why. You know, she's just a great floor leader. That last little cut, I mean, she knows how to play fundamental basketball. Ten points, four rebounds, three, two and a half assists. 64% free throw shooters, also made 12 three balls on the season, so she does a little bit of everything for Carlos Siegel's team. Her lead, Carlos' team leads by 10. Reese Goubeau will walk the ball up to him, track his own. Get a change of a defense after made free throw. 
sometimes you just want to see, mm -hmm. okay, what are we going to do out of you know, how are we going to get this, you know, whether you stay in it or not. I think they're going, where are their stands on? Ball's tip loose. Zone gets a steal for him. Here's a pass ahead. Right to the rim, and Meyer's shot won't go in for him. Ball's tipped out. That shot won't go in. It's fierce inside right now, and eventually the rebound comes into the hands of Kel Kelby, Kel Kelby Dolcic. Boy, get that one out. You know, to your point, Jerry, remember Bill Fitch, coach yep. at Bowling Green? Yep. I listened, listened to Bill Fitch speak one time. He ran his delay game in the first half. Just for one Just possession. Just to see how it works. I want to see if it yep. works. I want to see how you're going to defend it. Of course, there wasn't a clock at that particular right. time. Timeout, Fort Laramie. They lead by 10. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Our free throws today are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and in Sydney. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. It's a 19-9 Fort Laramie lead. They have scored four points in the quarter and just three for the Rushi Raiders as points have been very hard to come by here in the first two and a half minutes of quarter two. For both teams. You for know, both that's, teams, that's, that's correct. You know, We're in the zone look yep, here. Stand in the zone. Borcher's got back in the game. She's running baseline right now and has the basketball. Skip pass to Gubo. Borchers, once again, they get out to her and to her in a hurry. Ball's tipped trying to throw it inside. There's another turnover against the zone. Ava Turner. Oh, I thought she was going to get an and one opportunity. Instead, she'll go to the free throw line for a pair. Well, you know, they're, they're playing that 3 2 zone. And, you know, you talk a lot of times about going against a zone, and so many teams see that 2 3 zone, and, you know, occasionally maybe a 1 3 1. That 3 2 is a little different, mm -hmm. especially when you've got the top person on that 3 2 sagging back and helping in the post and covering the post. And that's tough to go against. A lot of, lot of pressure on the perimeter. Ava Turner is three for three at the foul line. Makes reversing the ball very, very Remember tough. Remember back in the day, Jerry, when we started with a three-point line, everybody said, well, you can't play zone against the three-point yes. shooters. We yes. got it all, everybody has to, and we've sure figured out how to zone three-point shooters now. Right. And that free throw uses a lot of rim to go in. Four points now for Ava Turner. And it's 21-9 to nine as this defense has clamped down on the Rushi Raiders. Porchers for three out of the corner. That was huge. That's what will be the zone, so they needed that in a big way. Her 29 three-point field goal of the season and under pressure. Carissa Meyer wanted up for jump shot. Realized was going to get blocked back at her. Just came back down and got called for traveling. Alex Rose will come back into the basketball game, as will Kate Sherman. Both teams have subbed frequently here in the opening half, trying to keep bodies on the floor healthy and rested. Luis Goubeau. He's off the Borchers, just made the three a minute ago. She heads to the rim, and now she's got another basket. She's got seven. Five of them in the last two possessions. And you know, Fort Lormie went back to a man-to-man, -man and they give a lot of credit to Rushi. They recognize that right away. Turner looking down inside. Cut the lead to seven. It was 12 just a moment ago. There's a pass down inside. The foul will allow Ariel Heitkamp to go to the free throw line. Yeah, what a good crisp pass to find her on the inside. You see who they assigned a foul to. Ronnie Pullman gets her first foul. Sixth team foul. Each team has six fouls in the half. Here's free throws by Heitkamp, who has not shot a free throw on the season. That doesn't matter to her. She makes a Leeds famous recipe chicken free throw to make it 22-14 on the Reese Myring Company CPA scoreboard. And yeah, we got at this, end, at this end, you get a bounce. At the other end, you don't. That, that seems to have been through almost a game and a half now. That kind of seems to be the way it is. 
Back man to man for Army. Pushed their lead back up to nine thanks to the two free throws. Gubo comes off a screen. Gets covered up quickly by Hoing. Pass inside polling. She has been effective down yes, there. She has been. She's That's got a big concern too of Fort Laramie coming into this. She's got seven in the game and cuts the lead to seven. This is Hyde Camp. Turner on the cut through the lane. Difficult angle for her. Kate Sherman rebounds. Here's a pass ahead to Borchers. She's also headed to the rim. Pass inside, pulling, and it was a little bit too hard and off her left hand. She had position. She did. That came from good ball movement, good ball reversal. Tony Ted at 10 is back all this week. Catch 10 games airing at 10 p.m. on WTLW and WSN Tuesday through Saturday. Part of our 24 tournament broadcast this week alone. Turn in, lose the remote, and enjoy. And check us out because we're doing a lot of live games as well this week. So check those out on our WSN website. You can see which games are live. Here's Trap out front. Did they get a steal? Big scramble on the floor. And did we get a timeout? I think we did, right? Did Rushi call timeout? Yep. Give credit to Ronnie yes, Bowling for that, that steal. Jayla Shappy went down the floor, got the timeout call after securing the ball. 2.59 to go in the second. You're watching high school basketball on WSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it to you. Say thanks to viewers support TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of games like this one and other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTOW.com and click the Donate button. Timeout Rushi. They were scrambling on the floor for a loose ball, either called by her coach or by Jayla Shappy. Either way, they get possession trailing by seven. Here's the zone again. Yep, coming out in the zone. Kind of expect that coming out of a timeout, a little difference. I think uh, that was blocked by Brandwee into the hands of Jaden Rose, who will advance into pressure. And the zone has been effective. They've gotten a 1-3. Rushi has gotten a 1-3 from the corner, and that's about it against the zone. Pass inside is knocked away. Here's another scramble on the floor for the ball, and this will be a held ball, too. I think it stays at this end. Oh, we got to go talk to the PA guy, Jerry. Not allowed to call it jump ball anymore. That's right. It's held ball. We got to go talk to the PA guy. Most of our viewers wouldn't remember a jump ball. Well, you know, that's a good point. Really? And we're going to get a push that allowed that uh, errant pass to occur. It also means it's one and one time. Let's see who the foul goes to. Poland gets her second foul. And to the free throw line, shooting these famous recipe chicken free throws, Alex Rose, who shoots 67% there on the season. And we're going to get a sub in. We are. Looks like we're going to bring in Summer Hoying to the basketball game. Both teams have done a great job of subbing. The, they're you know? trying to keep good, fresh bodies out there. Back into the game is Ariel Heitkamp, who made a couple free throws, a couple defensive plays, and off to the side goes Avery Brandewey. They're going small. Pressure some full court? Uh, you would think. You would think. Here comes Rose. Free throw. That was a little bit hard. Rebound to Poland. Borchers. Gubo. Gubo goes baseline. Pull up jumper. Sherman rebounds. Puts it back yeah, up and boy, in. Hey, look how high she keeps that ball yeah. up when she got that rebound. Absolutely. Three points. Kate Sherman cuts the lead to five. Close as been in a while. It's nine at the quarter break. And here's a runner off glass. Good fight for the rebound, put back up and scored by Alex Rose. Right back to seven to go. Here's Borchers into the lane. Sherman, she goes to the rim. Poling gets that rebound. Their size is really taking over yes, inside. Poling's got nine now. He's trying to stop one, but you can't stop the other. Bowling goes six foot, Sherman goes six one, and they've used that size as the ball will go out of bounds. 
And it will go out of bounds off of Carissa Meyer. Yep, she lost a handle on it. 124 to go before halftime. The lead is at five. Ooh, she trying to battle her way back into this one. Dubose, she's going to be picked up man to man right at the 10 second line. And Steele, here comes Heitkamp the other way. Made it. Four points for her all in this quarter. Good anticipation. Yeah, she's done a nice job coming in. She really in. has. 5-5 five, five, South of Moore. The lead is seven again, under a minute. Summer Horn slapped the ball out of bounds, didn't realize that she could have had a chance yeah. to secure it, but she just did what she could and got it out of bounds. Taylor Shappy lobs it to Sherman. She's going to go up inside and finish wow. inside. Now she's got five in the game. Well, I really like the way she plays on I the inside. Too. Yes, first team all conference player. Here's Hoying. Here's Ava Turner to the rim. She gets cut off. And her shot rolls across the rim. And Sherman just rips that rebound yeah. down. There was no foul or anything. And she just ripped the ball away. Dubo with the basketball. Sherman way out top. Polling's out of the game right now. She's got a couple of fouls. Coach got her out a moment ago. They'll play the last possession without her. Here's Dubo. Gotta go at five. That ball's tipped out of bounds. A really nice defensive play by Ava Turner. 2.9. Comes Borchers into the game. Also polling into the game. This gives, you know, a little yeah. timeout with three seconds left. A little under. You, you, gives you both teams time to set up what they want to do. Yeah, right? Alex Rose came in to defend this play. Trying to get Borchers coming off the screen is what I see in this action. And nope, they tried to lob it inside instead, but Hoyt knocked it away. And the first 16 minutes are in the books. Fort Lauderdale will take a five point lead to halftime. It's 27 for them, it's 22 for Russia. You're watching high school basketball on WOSA. We're back at Vandalia Butler. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Reese Myrig and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Shine, Jerry Snodgrass. Well, Jerry, quarter scores 6 and 16 for Rushi, quarter scores 15 and 12 for Army, and we're kind of sitting here at about a five point game. It's anybody's game right now. You know, it is, and I, I was thinking about, you know, that for the Raiders, you know, Paul Bremigen, you know, at halftime, hey girls, slow down a little bit, slow down on the offensive end, and Let's get the ball inside and make them take it away. And sometimes you have to slow that down a little bit, you know, so you're not off balance. If you're Connor Siegel and, and Fort Lorman, hey, pick it up. Let's pressure more. Let's get the turnovers and let's score on turnovers. Rushi had 11 points inside in quarter number two from Ronnie Poling and Sherman. Sherman has five for the game. Poling has nine, seven for CC Borchers. And is typical, there are seven different uh, for Hobby Redskins who have scored, and nobody has more than five points. Avery Brandwee has, and that's very typical of how they've played all year long. It will be Rushi Raider basketball as we start the third eight-minute segment tonight. Borchers will pass the ball down the corner. Shap, here's the trap, and she tried to slam it off of Turner's leg and could not. Numbers. Ava Turner right to the rim, and a right-handed shot finishes. She's got six in the game and a very aggressive start to half number two for Fort Army. And that's the you know, way they started the game, too. You know, strong pressure, get it out, get, get an easy bucket. Ran that wing. Here's another trap coming as they took the ball out of Borchers or out comes. of uh, yep. Goubeau's hands. Ball's tipped away. The second turnover. This one goes to Victoria Mesher. She's going to push the pace. And gets the ball back. And reverse lap is blocked by Sherman and out of bounds. A little deceiving from here, isn't it? Because it's a uh, deep baseline on this, and you can't quite see it to the wall. You can't quite see the, the line. Is she out of bounds? Look at, uh, it looks like uh, Jayla Shappy fell hard to the floor, and she's going to come out of the basketball game in that last little scramble after the turnover. 
and she will go let's talk to the trainer a bit and well, hopefully she gets back into the basketball game 5-5 five, five junior and I'll tell you I say in this every single game I have the opportunity this just happens to be cool out of bounds play ends up in Ava Turner's hands now she's got eight very quickly this happens to be athletic trainers Mark. Oh, March that's right and what a great job they do there was that really good help defense as the ball tried to bounce past it into polling instead of three different four line Redskins jumped on the ball, then they get the held ball their way. I say this with a lot of coaches, you know what? I'd love to watch their practice. Because I, I I have a feeling what they're working on, what they work on all the time. And they just work on that ball pressure, you know, deflecting, making it tough to pass the ball in and working on that help side defense all the time. This is Avery Brandaway. She will pass the ball to Turner. Turner's jumper. Will not go. Sherman rebounds. The lead is back to nine. Here's a skip pass that'll go along. Jumper out of the corner. That is short. But getting her own rebound is Simone Putoff. And we got lots of bodies on the floor. Victoria Mesher becomes the first player in the game with three fouls. And Simone Putoff will go to the free throw line. I'm watching Coach Bremingen on that, and I think he felt like they weren't going to call it unless he did. <laughs> so that first Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw, it goes a little bit hard off the back rim. And into the game we summer hoing, and Mesher will have to take a seat with those three fouls. This free throw she makes. Her first point of the game. You know, Jerry, I don't know any coach that says, we really like to foul a lot. But, <laughs> but when you're a team like Fort Larmer, you have so many talented players, it doesn't matter right. significantly. Right. Here's a pass inside, and Turner's, or not Turner, Summer Hoying is going to score. Seven. Somebody lost, some, uh, lost Summer Hoying in the basketball game. She had a pretty easy post up after a good pass. Well, you know, that's so easy to do when you have a lot of substitutions, mm -hmm. especially when you're subbing on both sides. You know, you forget your matchup. Borchers went baseline, jump shot, foul line. And did that hit the shot clock? It did. Busted. Yep. Shot clock? Well, there's a shot clock <laughs> underneath it. This is the game. Oh, don't say that. Yeah, shot. No, that's uh, why I said that. Uh, there is a shot clock underneath it. However, that hit the actual game clock. Now, we should just call it that above yeah. the basket. That's a good point. Jim has gotten very quiet for some reason. Yes, it has. This is Jaden Rose. And to the baseline, the pass goes Skyler Albers. Pass inside. Nope, oh, Skyler Albers is powered up and scored. That's a tough move, you know. Pretty fundamental. She got in there and gathered her, gathered her feet, went up strong. And a Rushi timeout. They've not put any points on the board here in quarter number three, so we're going to take a break, too. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Vandalia Butler High School. Our free throws tonight are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and in Sydney. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Bushy Raiders have been outscored 8-0 here in the first two and a half minutes of quarter number three. And that has taken a timeout as their lead has grown to 35-23. Yeah, that was a big timeout. You know, just a you know, stop the momentum a little bit. Actually, uh, Simone Putoff did make a free throw, so it's been 8 1 here in the quarter. Still a need for a timeout. See how Rushi regroups this time. A little half court trap coming? Yes, it sure looks at something a little different out of the timeout. Borchers works into the lane. Gubo for three. Short. Rebound. Brandon, he throws it ahead to the rim, goes Skyler Albers, and they get a basket in transition. Skyler. She's that's got double figures with 10. Yeah, and that's not what you wanted if you were Rushi coming out of that. Shot was forced up inside by Kelby Dosick and knocked out of bounds. Sure, I'm sure a lot of people would go, gee, you're playing such great man-to-man -man defense. Why switch right. to a zone in a timeout? But really, it's it's all about just changing the rhythm. And yep, yeah, exactly. Confusion a little bit, just enough to throw timing off. 
And you know, too, you know, come out with trap, things like that. It isn't always about a steal. I think a lot of times people think, well, it's not effective if you don't steal the ball. No, no, no. It's forcing a shot when they really shouldn't. Quick shot, something like that. <laughs> Trying to get an inbounds play going. Borcher's in the corner. There are some teams, they'd rather see you score than sit on the ball. Yes, they sure Because would. they want a certain pace of the game. Yeah, they figure you can still, they'll outscore you. Yep. Here's Borcher to the rim. She now has nine in the game. And going to carry the basketball that time as Turner was trying to get to the rim. Porchers has nine. Nine for Ronnie Poling. Five for Kate Sherman. Ten for Skyler Albers. Eight for Ava Turner, if you look at the scoring on the other end. You're right about that defensively. You know, sometimes I think the philosophy many times is we'll get three to year one. Mm -hmm. We'll get two to year one. Drive to the goal and another driving scoop and score. She's got 11. Porchers. Heitkamp tried to go baseline. She got doubled up and I think her, her coach takes a timeout. 4-11 to go. We're going to break two. You're watching High School Basketball WOSN. Carla Siegel took that timeout. She did so. And we're going to get a five count. Yes, they did. Well, you don't like to see that coming out of you a timeout. Sure but on the other hand, really good defensive pressure put on by the Rushi Raiders. They want to get this under double figures. Yep, and that's really a, that's a morale booster when you do that. Butcher's on a flare. Dubo wants to get into the lane. Her little runner goes off glass, off hard off the rim. Put back up, and that will go. Is that Sherman? Yep. It was. Kate Sherman with seven. And they are under doubles. The scoreboard marked it up wrong. And there's a drive to the goal. That will be Turner. She's got ten now, six in the quarter. Yeah, that's a backbreaker, too. You know, you just got, you cut it under ten. You, you really got things going a little bit, got a good bucket, and you give that up. Fans reacted. The scoreboard was incorrect. I think it is right now. Yes. At 39-30. Is that right? I believe so. Okay. Yes. Here's a move inside. 39-29. I think it's 20. Okay. 20, they got it back to 29. Yep. Okay. Yep. I know they've been jockeying around with a little bit. There was a foul inside. Tried to get Sherman posted up. Looking to see who the foul was assessed to. Looks like it will go to Carissa Meyer. Her first. Sherman's going to break loose on one of these out-of-bounds plays. Trying to get her off that, slip off that screen. There's a lob in pie. They got polling instead yes. this time. Yep. And she scores. Points 10 and 11 for her. It's a good call, Jerry. They were going to get one of them yeah, open they inside. They, they went to polling. They set up yep. both those post players to do that. Mesher looking for somebody to throw it to. The lead's at eight. Here's a steal. Butcher's trying to get to the rim under pressure, and she scores. Under pressure. Wow. Borchers, 13, 6 in the quarter, and it's back to a six-point lead. Here's Brandewee laying all the way the length of the floor, and it went out of bounds off of Avery Brandewee. This is brought to Rushi Raider fans to life. It was after that timeout, after the timeout, I think, by Consigo. Yeah. yeah. Borchers with the basketball. Hounded out front by Skyler Albers. Luis Gubo looking inside the polling. There's a lob pass to her. Polling missed that shot. Brando, he soared in to get the rebound. Talk about a strong rebound. Yes. Not only did she go a long way and go get it, and then she ripped it away from everybody. Here's Mesher trying to get to inside. Gubo with a steal. He's weaving through traffic. Turner gets a steal. And we're going to get hell ball or timeout. I think somebody took a timeout again. Yep. I Save think a possession. Fort Larm is going to get the, the timeout with 2.03 to go. 
Looking at my score sheet here with 203 to go. That is their third timeout. And I think Coach Bremigen's wondering how can they get a timeout if they didn't have the ball. Well, both, both teams were going on the floor for it, and that's the way it ended up. TV44 and WOSN are part of Axe TV, a nonprofit organization. Your donation in any amount is a contributing factor to our broadcast schedule. We thank you for your donations. Donate online at WTLW.com. 24 high school basketball games this week, Jerry. That is incredible. <laughs> Ten of which are going to go live. Ben Reif and the crew put all this together. Good work by our sales crew to make that happen as well. Think about how many student athletes that this station is promoting. Uh -huh. And even more so, how many communities. Yeah. That, that is just Im so impressive. I'm so blessed to be able to, to do that and, you know, speak volumes for these kids on the floor and the, the communities. I, you know, we talk off camera a lot about the, the communities. And, and some of the great things about them. And I, again, that's, I, I cherish myself for having a career that we're able to do that. I, I shared with you earlier, I was in Rushi and they have a tremendous monument. Here's a pass inside, that shot's blocked. Nope, gonna get a free throw. They have a tremendous monument to their French heritage in their school. Really cool thing. I took pictures of it to share with my family. Just those types of things in the small communities that we go to all the time. Yes, and I, you know, I'm a history buff anyhow, or, you know, geography and all that. And, that's one of the things in my former role. I was able to see literally every high school in the state of Ohio and every community. And it just, it's, it's amazing. Just totally amazing. And we missed the first three throws. She has five points in the game. And there's that end of the floor again, Jerry, where yeah. free throws seem to be so difficult. Our Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. It's a six point lead. Sherman had to go high for that pass. This is Borcher. She's in a big quarter. Working in the lane. Her shot's blocked, however. Knocked down by Skylar Albers. That size advantage at the guard position, I think, has been a big thing, too. You know, not just the physical pressure, but the size difference, you know, and making shots tough when they react to uh, reversing the ball and coming from the ball side. Albers trying to get inside and could not because of the defensive pressure. Under 90 seconds to go here in quarter three. This will be a three. Bounces long to Borchers. She's going to run in transition. Wow, what a nice pass. A really good pass. The ball shot was taken, however, by Addison Shappy. It got blocked. And we'll go the other way. And muscling one up in transition for a finish is Jaden Rose. That's a big change of events. Yes, it is. Who hit it? Goes out of bounds off of Reese Gubo. Thanks to really good defensive pressure by Rose. That's what I liked about Jaden Rose on that. You know, she went, she knew she was going to go all the way to the basket. And it was just her and her defender. She wasn't stopping. The lead goes to eight as we're under a minute. It was five at halftime. Turner wants to go back, cut pass. Albers wants to go up. Shots blocked out of bounds and went off of Albers. Boy, give, give Rushi a ton of credit for the pressure they've been putting on defensively. What do we call that? Walled up inside? Yes. Yeah. If you're going to foul anybody, foul them with your belly and your chest. And make sure your hands are behind your ears and just stand there and wall up. Right. Tyler Albers is going to get a much-deserved break. She has worked very hard for the majority of this quarter, and she's going to get a break for the last 45 seconds of it. Ball's tipped away from Sherman. Borcher's looking for somebody, and she finally finds Addison Shappy. Bounce pass in the corner. Here's a pass that goes cross court and finished by Poling. Wow. Really good pass from Simone Putoff. 13 for Poling. Six point lead. And right to the rim goes Jaden Rose. She's had a very active last three minutes of the basketball game and she draws a foul. Poling picks up her third foul. She becomes the first Raider with three fouls. Victoria Messer has three for Fort Army. Yeah, they're going to get her out, I think, you know, try to especially give her a little break, keep her out of 
any additional foul trouble. That is correct. Yeah. Kelby Dosick will replace her 5'10", a senior. Sherman gets the break. Poland stayed in the basketball yes, game. Yes, she did. There's another free throw opportunity by Jaden Rose. That Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw goes in. Puts the lead at six with 7.1 seconds to go. They're going to pressure Borcher, try to keep the ball out of her hands with two players. Put off, tried to get a shot up. Turner took it away from her. And in a mad scramble, it will be a 42-35 Fort Lauderdale break after 24 minutes. Fourth quarter coming up. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Vandalia Butler, where our scoreboard tonight is presented by Reese, Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. Mark Schein, Jerry Snodgrass, it was a 15-13 quarter for Fort Laramie. And they will take a seven-point lead in the next eight minutes. Skyler Albers has 10, as does Ava Turner. 13 for CeCe Borchers, 13 Ronnie Poling. Mesher and Poling each have three fouls. Nobody else is in foul trouble. Rushi basketball. State man-to-man. -man. State is strong. Denial man-to-man -man on the ball side. Put off. Looking for somebody. Instead, she throws the ball into the hands of Skyler Albers, who races down the floor and scores. You look how much of their offense has come from good defensive pressure or turnovers. They forced so many. Borcher is working inside where she is triple teamed. Put off gets it back. And then Gubo gets into the lane for a little runner that bounces around. Sherman gets the rebound, lost her balance. And the rebound, uh, that comes to Jaden Rose. This is Ava Turner. And, and my memory is not good, Jerry. I don't remember having that knee wrap before. That no, looks like an uh, abrasion think, on the yes. floor type thing. First minute gone here in quarter number four. Rose puts the ball into Mesher's hands. Brandewee, short jumper for her. Bounces in, hit the front of the rim and fell in. Avery Brandewee has got seven. That's her first score since the opening quarter. And we're at 11. Does Rushi have a chance to make one more run and Fort Lauderdale going to lock him down? You just see the, you know, I mean, every ball is just so contested. Yeah. It's so tough. We're going to get somebody throwing the elbow in that pile. Offensive foul. Yeah. I think they got Jaden Rose I, for yes, throwing an did. elbow in there. She had the basketball and apparently threw an elbow. Polling's back in the game. Well, so is Jayla Shappy. A couple of starters back in for Coach Bremigan. Coach Siegel wanted an explanation of that, and for some reason, all officials turned their back to her. <laughs> Can't imagine why that would be. Here's Borchers. Her team needs some points. Shappy bounce passes, kicked out of bounds. Just what even they, like is that. Is that a hockey kick save? Is that what we call yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. But just like that, you know, I yep. mean, it's just like uh, passing. I mean, if it's not the hands, it's the feet. And it just disrupts everything. They're so active defensively. Here's Fort Laramie. Here's a lob inside Poling. And Poling will get called for an offensive foul. That'll be foul number four for her as she runs over Ava Turner. Put her shoulder down a little bit. I think that's it. You know, put her head and shoulder. It's easy to do when you're an offensive player under all that pressure on the inside. See if Coach chooses to leave Poling in the game with those four fouls. Just about has to, trailing by yeah. 11. And we ahead, Turner. Mesher goes inside. Here's a quick pass cross court. And we're going to get a foul as Skyler Albers was trying to take a jump shot up. Oh. 
That Reese Goubeau's first foul. Albers, the 73% free throw shooter on the season. She has not been there yet tonight. In the game, Fort Laramie, 8 of 12 from the free throw line. Now 8 of 13. Rushi just 4 of 10. Yeah, I'd almost go out on a limb and say they're four of or 1 of 13 on this end of the quote. Yep, you <laughs> got that one to go down, yeah. 13 points for Skyler Albers. She leads her team in scoring tonight. Came in averaging 8 a game. Happy looking for somebody to pass it to. Here comes CeCe Borchers to get the basketball. If you just look away from the ball, look, look how far that help side defense is. Here's a three. And the thing is, they react yeah. so well when the ball comes around. Jaden Mesher, they're able to close out to three-point yes. shooters after helping so well. Here's a steal. Borchers headed the other way. One defender back. Little Euro step for Borchers. Rolls around for her. But Sherman's there to clean up yeah. the rebound to score points eight and nine for her. Took him almost three minutes for Rushi to get on the board here in the fourth quarter. That ball's tipped out of bounds by Borchers. She knocked it away from Mesher. I guess you can really tell as this game has evolved, you can really tell that this is the rubber match. You know, you just yep. tell that, you know, play ten nights and one team's going to win five times and one team's going to win the other five. There's a back screen layup that will go to Turner on the out of bounds play. Ava's got 12. I think that was Mesher. Mesher was Mesher. It was yep. 21, not 11, wasn't it? That yep. would be my mistake. Okay. Trying to read jersey numbers. Victoria has four points now. Thank you, Jerry. Almost a steal by Brandewee. The ball's tipped out of bounds, and what it looked like, Skyler Albers rolled an I ankle. Think she did. Here they come with a hockey substitution, bringing a line change in with three bodies. Heitkamp is in the game. So is Summer Hoying into the game. So is Carissa Meyer into the game. So they brought uh, just a wave of them. Polling jumper, long. Albers rebounds. It's a 12-point lead. I look at those guards, you know, for Fort for, uh, for Laramie. You know, they just play like Carla Siegel. You know what I mean? They're aggressive. And I'm saying that positively, by yes, the way. I mean, saying. just just confident. This will be a Rushi timeout as they dove on the floor for a loose ball. This will be timeout number three for them and a break for us. 4 14 to go in the fourth. You're watching high school basketball, WOSN. We're back here at Vandalia Butler High School. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piquet and Sydney. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Homestyle happens here. Rushi has taken timeout at number three. Fort Laramie has taken... I must have missed one. I got some free throws. Are also, that's fourth timeout. I missed one. Yes, there was one. I yeah, I did. You're, think you're on a loose ball, I think. Yeah. Yep, and, and Fort Laramie has two timeouts remaining. They're going to need some points in a hurry. Looking down inside is Sherman, now pulling at the top of the circle. Comes Porchers, comes off a screen. Dubow gets a three look. They have not had yeah, many of those. That You're was right. huge. Reese Dubow. She had not scored since the opening quarter. Here's a shot back right at you. Skyler Albers nails one from the arc, too. She's got 16 in the game, 10 in the second half. Pushes the lead to 12. You think you got a little bit of mo, you make a three, yeah. and then they can right back and nail one against you. You know, that's a team that shoots only eight, a little over eight threes a game. Yeah, they don't shoot many. A lot of stuff in transition. State champions in 2021, 2015, 2013. Here's a pass inside, polling, finishes. Ronnie Poling's got 15. Talking about those state championships by Fort Laramie, unable to play in 2020 yep. because of COVID, and there are a lot of Redskin fans think that was their best team. 
Carla told me, you know, when we were down there that they typically, while well, they don't, they don't put pictures on the wall like a lot of schools do of their state champions, probably because they'd run out of room. But, uh, but, it, but they have that 2013 team up on the wall. Good for or, them. excuse me, on the... It was the 2020 team, 20 the COVID team. team. Yes. yes. Uh, what a great gesture that is. That is. Yep. Right now, there are three minutes to go, and they're up 10, trying to get to the regional finals where they would match up with the undefeated Tri-Village Patriots. Here's a trap on the wing, but Turner gets out of it, finds Rose. Playing a little keep away right now. Rushi's only committed four fouls, so they can come out aggressively and not put them at the free throw line. There's a steal, Gubo. Nope, she knocked it away. Polding gets it. And, and I haven't kept track of turnovers, but I would tell you that Rushi has forced uh, Fort Warmy into more turnovers than they've had in a long time. Fortress was headed to the rim, but before she could get there, Fort Lauderdale Redskins stepped up in her way, and then she lost the basketball out of bounds. Back into the game comes Simone Putoff. Ball's banged out of bounds by Putoff. Looking to inbound it again. Brandaway lobs it over. Everybody to measure. Victoria down the floor. She goes. Nobody picks her up, and she's going to spring it back and set it up again. Kill some clock. Smart move on her part. I think you know. Didn't force it in. Let's take a little time off and get a better one. Victoria Mesher, just a sophomore, having a really good year. She's a second team all conference player in the MAC. That's not in the MAC, excuse me, in the Shelby County uh -huh. Athletic League. Back cut. Basket ended up into the hands of Mesher. She's got six. That's just excellent, you know, playing together visual. Here's a steal. Summer Hoyne going length of the floor, but she gives it up. I think that was Rose, was it not? It was. Yes. Rose was headed to the rim and draws a foul, and they're starting to put this one away. Reese Goubeau gets foul number two. And to the free throw line will go Jaden Rose. She's had a really nice effect on the basketball game at both has. ends of the floor. Defensively, she's moved the basketball around on the offensive end. Yeah, hard. sometimes that's the thing, you know. With I mean, everybody certainly focuses on statistics, you know, scoring, obviously, rebounding, you know, but sometimes they're just players that, that you need them on the court. They're that, they're that chemistry player. Some coaches call them glue players. Yeah, they, they, and that's they, a good they way They make everybody it. stick together, and then she rolls in her free throw. She has four points in the game all in the second half. 55-42. Rushi Raiders brought in Addison Chappie during that free throw exchange. Carissa Myers in the game as well. And Chappie was trying to get inside to the rim and was fouled. I mean, that's a mark of a good team too. When you look statistically scoring wise, you don't see any single person that jumps yeah. out with out outrageous numbers, you know, and it just, that, that's a good team. Skyler Albers picked up foul number three. Polling didn't go to meet the pass, and Brandon Wee steps into it and races down the floor and finishes with a layup. Seven for nine for her in the game. And they're starting to put this one away. What do we got? I got a foul. Yeah, the other thing that does right now, too, is you now you're going to force, you know, Rushi into they need a quick score. Well, you know, you're forcing a bad shot. And it is, you don't like to play that way when you're Rushi or you're behind, but it's just the way it is. Time out for Laramie. If you enjoy games like this one, are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? If so, please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. You know, Mike or Mark, you talk about, you know, the communities that we bring this to, you know, WSN brings this to. I was so fortunate here in, back in January, early January, to uh, go to Fort Laramie and Carlos Siegel had asked me to come down and represent. They had a 10-year reunion mm -hmm. for their 13 championship team. 
and every one of those girls was there. And it was so interesting at the start of the game, or excuse me, at the start in their state tournament that time, we used to do a video yeah. of one of the students. Right. And one of them stated in that, said, this is a memory, or this is something that we will that will last for a lifetime. Well, she was back uh, ten years later. Do you still have that memory? And yeah. she just uh, grinned. One yep, twenty-two to go. Well, I can tell you this, Jerry. Uh, in your past job, no one presented championship trophies better than you did. It was a, it was a thrill when you you looked at what it represented. You know, the, talk about it. You know, it takes a village. You, you were representing the village, the community, and every hard work and it just it was just such a thrill to do that defenses continue to be very aggressive that shots blocked by Brandway as we approach a minute to go they have clamped down on here in the in the fourth quarter in particular see if they play this one out or choose to foul playing pitch and catch Brandway and Mesher out front now they get Meyer involved, and the ball goes to the corner, and Nick's going to hold it. Well, you hear the statement all the time that defense wins championships, and wow, did it make a difference tonight. And we got an official called a timeout because his shoe came on time. With 30 that's a new one. That's a new one. <laughs> We've been batting around basketball a whole long time. Well, we've got a lot of subs in the game as well. That's why he did it. That is. That's a heads-up play to allow both coaches to sub new bodies into the basketball game. And that was really a very heads-up play on his part. <laughs> Here we were about to, to make a little bit of light of it, but by, by doing that, he got he out got, both yes, teams to did. get 10 new girls into the game. That's a really good idea. And you know, either way, if you're Rushi, if you're Fort Romney, you want those kids to have been yeah. in this game. You, you just do. Get a chance to be on the floor in the regional semifinals. And we're going to get a shot up as well that bounces around and doesn't go, but the rebound's put up inside. Going to get one more shot. This is Heitkamp to the rim. And it will go over to the Rushi Raiders. Yeah, and if you're in the game now, you don't want to take the ball out of bounds. You, you, want, to be the, you <laughs> want to get the scoreboard. You're not going to get it back, are you? All right, we got a lot of new bodies in the basketball game, and both coaches have emptied their benches. And we're going to get one more pass in bounds and see what Rushi chooses to do with it. Doing some quick addition on my score page here as well. Here's Rushi. He'll take one last opportunity to pass the basketball around. The Fort Army Redskins will take a 57 to 42 victory. Jerry, this game was very, very close, but the final quarter, it went 15 for the Fort Lauderdale Redskins to just seven, and that kind of it just kind of spaced it all out. And it just wore them down. I think that defensive pressure just wore them down, and it's it's easy to do. I mean, that's a tough, tough act to, to have to go against. CC Borchers will finish her playing career with a 13-point game. Ronnie Poling had 15-9 for Kate Sherman today. Rushi had quarter scores of 6, 16, 13, and 7. They will finish this campaign with a 22 and 5 record. For Army, they will move to 25 and 2. Quarter scores for them 15, 12, 15, and 15. How about that for consistency? Yes, unbelievable. 15, 12, 15, and 15. They were led in scoring today by Skyler Albers. She had 16, 10 for Avery Turner. Ten, uh, six of those came in the second half. Avery Brandewe had nine. Well, Jerry, if you're a pole person, we got a matchup on Saturday, don't we? Number we one, sure Tri-Village. They were a 50-38 victor today uh, over uh, Marion Local. And now the Fort Lumber Redskins were rated number two in the poll when that poll came to an end. And they get a win today over Rushi. we got a big game in here on yes, Saturday. Yes, we do. See what kind of defensive pressure that one comes up with. And the offense that goes with it, that will be a tremendous game it here. It should be. I, you know, what we saw in that first game, you know, some great, great players, and this should be a great, great matchup in the finals. It's a game that we will have here on WSN over the weekend. 
Well, we want to thank the athletic director here. That would be uh, Jordan Shoemaker, who put this whole thing together for us. A wonderful facility and met and did a great job for us. We thank our scoreboard sponsor, uh, Reese Myring and Company CPAs. Our free throw sponsor tonight was Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Here in the facility, Ben Reif and Alexi Waddle did all the camera and audio work for us here. Back at the station, Megan Sherrick and Nick Fralick edited all this together. We thank you for watching this today. The Fort Laramie Redskins will move on into the regional finals in Division 4 with a 57-42 victory over the Rushi Raiders. You've been watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN.